The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Sovereign Tech, your guide to internet safety in an unsafe world and generic Viagra. And also brought to you by the Lengthy Narther podcast. Uh, distri- links in the description for all of these um, below. And uh, all rights reserved, but no mites reserved. No, wait, I did that wrong because it's been forever since we did a podcast. <laughs> No rights reserved, but all mites reserved. And I'm here with Steve Miller Miller. Uh, hey, do you remember when we used to do podcasts? Do you I that? do remember. In fact, I remember it fairly fondly, unlike a lot of things from when I lived in Philadelphia. So, <laughs> right. Uh, also, yep. we have a uh, we have a super chat uh, from someone named WMD. Uh, he said, um, "Hey, did I ever probably tell you- from Iraq? Yeah, probably from Iraq." Hey, did I ever tell you about the time that I stole Hubert Selby Jr.'s cane and then did smack with it and it OD'd? We were at the San Francisco post office that w- that has horrible reviews on Yelp, and after it was over, I lost my tickets to go see Nirvana. Next thing you know, I was in a shitty punk band, Grubs. Wow. Thanks for the uh, $25 super chat. If you thank, you, to- thank you thank you, for the $25. Thank you for using up all 300 words that you're allowed, and we will now go back to our show where we refer to Jews as Welsh and <laughs> think that's hilarious because we're boomers. Uh, aren't you a Zoomer? No, you're a boomer. You're a thirty-year-old boomer like me, uh, right? So, how have things been? But by the way, if you if you want to send me twenty-five dollars, I will talk about your cane heroin stories all day, all day. <laughs> That's a pretty low time value if you're willing to spend all day for twenty-five dollars. But <laughs> well, you have to send you have to you have to send me multiple ones in order to get it done, a, right? A left a leftist might contend that. $25 to work all day might be somebody who would benefit from a minimum wage, but let's not be talking like statists up in here, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> so how you been, man? Where have you been? How you- oh, pretty good. Uh, living in Delaware, me and 19 other people saw the governor on the freeway the other day because he has license plate number one of the <laughs> Delaware plates. Uh, once got blocked by the governor for calling him short on Twitter, and then he oh. had to unblock me as part of that court case where, like, you can't block your own constituents if you use your thing for uh, uh, informing people of things, which, I mean, it's Delaware. If I'd remained blocked, I don't think anything necessarily would have happened. Uh, well, I mean, I quit. S- that's I mean, that's one twentieth of the constituency. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I quit smoking weed. That's a important libertarian. Oh, topic. wow. Right. Th- that's the thing is being such a gutter faggot hipster that as soon as it becomes legal, you're like, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I've, it, it appears I've made a terrible mistake. I better <laughs> stop uh, if only to improve my suburban gay dad branding. Right. You know, if I if I want to go full Joe Mattery said make my own spec sitcoms about uh, being a suburban gay dad with a tubby Asian hubby, then, you know, I, I, I can't be stopping to take bong hits every five minutes. I know lots of people who were who used to smoke weed every day, and as soon as it was legal, like they were on, like they kept smoking for about a year, and then they were like, "I'm bored of this shit. This is stupid." Conversely, yeah. I also knew people who were like, "Man, weed is lame, man. So stupid." And then once it became legal, I was like, "Wait, you're you smoking weed? I like, can't. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? It's legal." <laughs> I don't smoke weed. I only do edibles. Yeah, those are my Ugh. favorite. Although they're not as bad as the, uh, I don't consider myself a weed smoker because I don't buy weed. I just mooch off of everybody else's weed. Those people should be publicly executed. (laughs) Or the vapors. (laughs) Yeah. But if you're buying your own vape, that's I'm, I I don't have a problem with that. It's, it's, it's the, uh, building your identity around being a weed moocher, but I'm, uh, (laughs) bogarting that. Nah, as, as somebody who, who used to buy his own goddamn weed? I, I I can't endorse that behavior. So I ended up taking up smoking weed, asterisk asterisks, pl- like a million asterisks. So do you remember the Dave Chappelle sh- four hundred and twenty asterisks? Four hundred and twenty of them. Uh, do you remember the uh, Dave Chappelle skit where uh, they had the the weed that doesn't get you high, and it was like Oduls for weed, but it was called Odweeds because it doesn't have THC I- in it. Yeah, I well, vaguely remember this. Well, guess what? That's actually a thing now. You can actually go to the store in pretty much virtually every state in the union. Uh, they have like uh, CBD stores, and uh, yep. I found out that like they have weed that you can buy that doesn't have THC in it. And I was like, "What?" And I went down there, and I was like, 
what? They were like, yeah. And I was like, oh. Ah. And they were like, mm. And so I bought some. It was the most weird Wait, encounter I've all... ever had in my entire life because no words were said. But uh... are all the CBD stores owned by tw- by gifts from Black Twitter? <laughs> I wish. Dude, I wish I went in there and all I saw was like deep fried memes everywhere. I would I'd just live there. Um, ah, the old meme shop. Yeah, the old meme shop. But I, I went and I bought weed and I, I smoked. I, I, I was like, fuck it. What's, if I can buy weed, like, what's the best way to smoke it? In a blunt. So I went and got some uh, Swishers. Do you remember those things? Remember Swishers? Damn, you really went full black Twitter. Right. Continue. <laughs> so I, I got some. Uh, I, I got some. Well, I could have got grape, but I, I opted for blueberry and peach. Uh, for the first yeah, time, stop I got grape culture. <laughs> So I I I, uh, I I I I rolled some blunts. I rolled a fat blunt and I smoked it. And uh, guess what? I didn't get high. That sounds like a lot of work for nothing. I don't know. <laughs> no, but CBD actually has some some neat effects. It kind of relaxes you, like clears my head a little bit, and uh, it helps me with sleep. Like I will zonk out. I have I have insomnia, like legitimate like insomnia. If I try to stay up all day and down all night. I'll get insomnia. But if it's inverted, I have no problem sleeping all day and being up all night. No problem with that. See, it, the the other thing is I'm a lot less paranoid now. And if if I had actually been high, I would have thought that CBD stood for like cops besieging Delaware or something. <laughs> I don't know. But CBD, if you have more CBD uh, along with THC, it actually gets rid of the paranoia. So that, that was a problem with me. Like um, I had an edible. And I had a bad, I think I've talked about this, but I had a bad experience with it. Uh, I got a little pint of ice cream and on the side of the ice cream, it said like, oh, oh, only eat like half because it was like a test batch or something. And I was like, pint of ice cream, fat guy, do the math. I am not eating half also, a pint of ice cream. Also, plus munchies. That's right. ridiculous. Exactly. That's a ridiculous thing to. Yeah. So I went from like, man, this ice cream is kicking my ass to like hiding under my blankets, thinking that I was getting raided by the FDA or, or what what is it? DEA, excuse me. The DEA. I think I was getting raided by the DEA. And if like someone knocked on my door and like, hey man, let's smoke a little, uh, let's smoke a little hookah or something, I would have fucking peed the bed. I was like legitimately that afraid. And ever since then, even just smoking a little bit, like I get like insane paranoia. Like, um, so when marijuana became legal in Nevada, and I hadn't smoked it in like what six years or something i was like fuck it why not uh, i smoked a little bit and i was like oh my god they're gonna come and arrest me because they can smell it from my house and it, i had to like keep telling myself jim it's legal they can't do anything to you it's legal you're fine <laughs> but it didn't matter like oh no they're, they're gonna find something else to arrest me over and i was like all right that was the reason why i quit i'm done with this but when i found out i could get weed that doesn't get me high or paranoid i was like sign me up <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I do. Here's the thing, though. Uh, it, as somebody who came of age in in Lulbertism in the early 2010s, late 2000s aughts, whatever you want to call it, uh, like possibly you and a lot of our listeners, I was reared by this idea from weed activists that was repeated by libertarians that weed's not addictive simply because it's not physically addictive, oh, no. which is the dumbest fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, anything can be addictive if you do it pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, your your brain just gets used to that. And how do I know this? Because I'm a gambling addict and I sure as hell ain't stopping that one. Yeah. And but I love porn. Uh, I don't have a porn addiction. I can quit any time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the porn addiction wouldn't be so strong if these milfs wouldn't be so thick all the time. Right. Right. By the way, I'm I'm really getting mad at like porn sites because every time I go to a porn site, I see like a cute girl on there, and I'm like, oh, click, and next thing you know, it's like, oh, hi, step brother. It's like, oh god, that's so fucking gross. All right, I, I don't, even, I don't even, I don't even number look at one porn, porn search results. People people love thinking about having sex with their relatives, yeah. and not just the Roosevelt family. I mean, the step stuff. It's like. That's that's borderline enough to be like, nah, stepmom. That's just basically your mom's or your excuse me. That's like basically your dad's uh, girlfriend, whatever. Who who knew we started having a conversation about addicted or we wound up talking about a different kind of 12 steps. <laughs> we went from talking about addiction to a dick. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I. Uh, 
just I so I want to state publicly on the record and in front of all the listeners that I hold absolutely no ill will towards you for unfollowing the woke Joe Matarese account. We're cool. Uh, and follow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, or it may be an automatically unfollowed because woke Joe is just spitting out so many truths about oh. being an Italian. You know what? Let me fix that. Pro- it's probably. Problematarese is the is the username. It's not a uh, well. Ju- it, just at, at me on Twitter with it, and I'll follow it again. Because uh, okay. here's the thing: like, because I follow 666 people on Twitter, so if I follow someone new, oh, I see. I unfollow someone. So if I don't see, I didn't see you post on there for a while. I thought like, oh, this is a dead account or something. So I probably unfollowed it. Not even oh, thinking about that, it. Oh, that happened. I was off of there for like two months when I deleted that's the Twitter why. app, and yeah. then I had that I had to restart it. Yep. No. Okay. Word. No. But that's a. Common misunderstanding. I should have uh, blocked you and thrown a fit, but, uh, <laughs> and then and then complain that I uh, that I read it at your GoFundMe. <laughs> uh, you know, I I will call I will call you a communist though. You are you are a you are a goddamn pinko for doing that. <laughs> and everybody who unfollows the uh, social justice par- parody of Joe Matteris is uh, an in- is endorsing Marx. We're going to fix that. So let's see. Who should? I'm getting to the point now where I'm running out of like. Legitimate oh wait, people can I choose? Are you going to give me nominees of who you can unfollow? This right. would be great. So here we go. So here, here, here are the options. So um, Brian Sovereign. No, uh, just kidding. No, <laughs> no way. Let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, so Michael like, Malice at the very bottom. That's usually where I was finding the accounts that I don't need anymore. But I'm out of those. So, I mean, the very first one is at the drive-in, and I need to know if at the drive-in is going to come to town because I want to go see at the drive-in. Uh, John Alderite, Ald- Alderite, which is the bass player for the Mars Volta. Yeah, oh, well. let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of him. Even though he is also in Deltron Thirty Thirty. All right. Well, that doesn't mean you can't tag him in your little promo post for this podcast. <laughs> That's a very Karen from Philly move, by the way. Oh. Uh, is is med- mentioning someone in the podcast and then using that as an excuse to like some random Tuesday afternoon be like, "Oh, hey, what's going on?" Uh, I don't know, Doug Stanhope. We mentioned you in the latest Monumental Waste of Time podcast. Give it a listen. <laughs> I, I I really don't think <laughs> that he would be interested in that. I think a lot of those, I know the Mars Volta. I mean, like the the two guys proper. One of their albums was about how we need to vote for Obama or whoever the Democrat was because Bush was so terrible and we don't want another Bush. Triggered. So don't think they're particularly good. A lot of musicians, like there's a music, uh, band that I really love, where the bass player comes out wearing a um a, a giant hammer and sickle on his shirt, and. He even wore it to a uh, an Oklahoma Senate uh, th- con- or congressional thing when they were deciding on whether or not they should use one of their songs as the state song because they're from Oklahoma. And they were like, oh, you're wearing a commie shirt. Yeah, we're going to vote against it now. <laughs> and they voted against it. So now their song isn't whatever, just because you wore a commie shirt, which I think is reasonable. Uh, I was wearing the same shirt when I got fired from the Freedom Feet. <laughs> well, I think we all did. Everybody everybody wears commie shirts yep. after that. Everybody's a SJW communist. Go fund me snitcher after after leaving the Freedom Fiends, obviously. It's, go fund me snitcher. You go fund That's me an snitcher. app. Oh, snitcher would be a great app. Oh my god, I would be so happy. Maybe I should learn. I should learn programming just so I can make the Snitcher app. Like, hey, they have that. They have that in Philly. It's it's the Philly three one one app provides you a way to. I mean, granted, it's not the cops or anything, but oh. you can file like license and inspections complaints anonymously. And they were advertising it on like the train and shit, and uh, a lot of people were defacing the ad and taking it down, and it was not well received by the general public. Oh. To uh, that you, to anonymously snitch on your neighbors so that people could come find you. Well, I guess that means Ancapistan is coming any second now because everybody's Anca- The only reason why someone would take down a, a, a snitch app banner was because they're Ancaps, right? Yes, that that's is the, only, the only discernible reason. Yeah, that's that's uh, so. Uh, by the way, here we're, we come. We're really living in a banner time for someone saying that their First Amendment rights have been violated because you make fun of them for saying something idiotic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like it's it's 
it's a wave that's been sort of cresting for the last couple of years. But man, this is this is the renaissance of, uh, hey, uh, this person's a moron. Oh, yeah. Well, he has a right to say it. Uh, oh, <laughs> put me in my place. Oh, you got, you got banned from YouTube? Well, you know, they are a private company. I didn't I don't know if you were aware that YouTube was a private company. Were you aware of this? I, I, I No, I was not aware of this. No, I was not aware. This is this is brand new. I, I could have swore that they that were, this was a government and the First Amendment applied. No, I, this was Well, a- before we got on the air, somebody was telling me that nobody should ever get thrown off of YouTube unless they do something specifically illegal, which <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, but definitely, certainly wouldn't lead to a bunch of really stupid laws being passed. That no, sir, no, no. way, no how. <laughs> so, like, it, like it's kind of funny because I mentioned that like anytime I talk about YouTube and what I think is wrong with YouTube, I always caveat it with saying like, "Hey, but first of all, YouTube's a private company; they can do whatever they want." But, and then. I always get like these people who like do the opposite of the it's a private company where they're like mocking me for saying that's a private company. I'm like, I'm not doing that, though. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the point yeah. I'm trying to make. I'm trying to say I'm trying to cut co- trying to state all of the facts. That's one of the facts that's relevant to the conversation. Yeah, the private company they can do whatever they want, but I think they're doing it wrong. Let me explain what I think is a better thing for them to do. I have imagined that you have the weakest argument I can imagine, so therefore I win yeah. this interaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, it's you should always steal, man. You should, and it's weird man. because you see you see a lot of these free speech absolutists, which I don't think is a thing. I don't. I really believe that even the people that s- claim they are free speech absolutists really are not, Mm-mm. and. Uh, there's always a caveat there. And and one of the ways that I know this is that they continually make themselves known on places like YouTube and Twitter and not, I don't know, Gab. And why don't they do it on Gab? Because everybody fucking hates Gab. No, why? No, no. Because they let just fucking anything go. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Gab, Gab's, like, Gab's not free speech anymore. You didn't get the memo. They, they, oh, because they, they threw Cantwell off. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. And then they also uh, banned porn. And if you try to point out, like, hey, buddy, um, porn is free speech, they go, no, it's not. This is a thing that's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I was unaware of this. But uh, I banning banning Cantwell, though, I don't think is so much censorship as it is a sign of self-love. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you love yourself, you're not going to let Cantwell anywhere near you or uh, your platform. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I'm just making notes. Just want to make sure they got all my 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 notes because I don't have to go through the whole oh, thing. Okay, again. we confirmed federal agent. Nobody <laughs> would take notes unless they're a Fed, or unless you're doing show notes for a podcast. Yeah, aka a Fed, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the Fed the Feds run podcasts, <laughs> but uh, speaking oh, by the way, of Feds and podcasts. Spe- speaking of Fed and podcasts, let's talk about what the interest rate should be this this quarter. Uh, I think it should be zero uh, percent. Because we're negative face, three, yeah, negative three percent. We should actually pay people to get loans. That's what we should do. You want a loan? Oh, you, well, you can get a million dollar loan. We'll make you pay, you know, negative ten dollars. So uh, here's $10 also. I may not be to borrow. I may not be smoking any weed anymore, but I'm still paranoid enough to. Be, I fervently believe that Joe Rogan's a CIA asset. <laughs> okay, I need to hear this. I I pitch, believe pitch, he's pitch a CIA. It. Pitch it. P- pitch your reasons why. Uh, uh, he has this following that sort of came out of nowhere. And unlike everybody else who gained a following around the same time, it never really waned. So uh, you have you have Mark Marin. Uh, he's and when you log into a place like. I don't know, YouTube or anything. It's always the first thing that pops up. They very, very much want you consuming Rogan and they want you consuming these arguments and repeating these arguments that are not very well thought out, that are very advantageous to, I don't know, what we might call the deep state. And everybody in Rogan's little circle tends to advance very pro-state, pro-neoconish sort of arguments and it's spiced with MMA, and MMA stands for uh, millions and millions of agents. Yeah, uh, yeah. Million, million man I, agency. I, million man agency. 
But no, I I I think he's if if he's not specifically CIA, he's getting help from him. Uh, well, I also know that they also have people. I think on. it's less. I think it's less crazy than Cantwell being a federal agent. I think Cantwell's uh, just a fucking idiot. <laughs> implying that he no he's a he's an informant he's kind of like hal turner yeah right? yeah so he's kind of like hal turner like he just snitches on eh, wasn't hal turner from the beginning kind of set up and advanced by the feds though yeah, yeah. because you could tell that you could tell the the feds aren't aren't helping put chris cantwell's ideas in the mainstream they are with with it's, it's with, I, I i genuinely think that uh hal turner really does believe most of the things he says i think when he's wait he's not into, dead no, he's no, he's at least I think he has his own radio show. His radio show is back on the air. Oh, I had no idea. I, I yeah. 100% <laughs> if I, if I, thought I, I remembered hearing something about him dying. No, 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 no. He went to he went to court or, or he went to jail and he's been out for a while. Maybe he died. I don't know. But last I checked, he, he tried to start up his uh, radio show again. So, so the thing, the things that I think he was bullshitting on for the feds was was making those vague threats. Because he would, he wouldn't. He was very careful about the way he said it, except for one time, which got him thrown in jail. Which he'd be like, "Wouldn't it be a shame if, uh, wouldn't it be a shame if one of these, uh, uh, you know, judges died? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be a shame? Wouldn't that be a shame if someone went to their hometown of, insert hometown here, and uh, you know, did something that would be that would be bad, and thus wrong to do. Kind of like the way Tom Likas talks about, like." Oh, your girlfriend won't get an abortion. Well, you should celebrate her. Um, what you definitely shouldn't do is definitely not celebrate her pr- new pregnancy in a hot tub with champagne because she could she could get a miscarriage, and that would. I be love wrong the notion that nobody is onto this. The idea that <laughs> oh, uh, man, uh, surely I'll be immune from prosecution if I just put it in this like sarcastic little ha 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 ha. <laughs> But I I, I, I I did watch some interesting movies the other day. I watched the Ninja Turtles versus Batman, and I borrowed it from the public library, which I totally did not torrent from an illegal place because piracy is illegal and therefore wrong to do. And you should definitely not go to 13372. or 13372.to. You should definitely not go there and torrent things with a VPN. Totally not do that because that would be illegal. And that's wrong to do. And that could come back to me, and I could get in trouble. So, don't do that. It, it, in other news, the uh, this episode will be called "The Pirate and the Butt Pirate." <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm the pirate. Cool. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> am I piracying? Am I doing any butt piracy of myself? I'm just not. You tell me. Yet. I I don't have camera. I. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea what you do while we podcast. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm stabbing my table with a um, the plant. You ever spike. done any butt stuff, Jim? Tell the people. Um, man, this this energy drink is so delicious. Oh, oh I'm gonna drink ah, it. Ah, prevents me from confirmation. Yeah. We have the documents. No, I'm not into Jim butt Jesus. Stuff. Conf- <laughs> Jim Jesus confirmed anaros user. No, no, that I, I've been very open. About my my fetish, I'm into the uh, she's uh, when you nut but she's still sucking. I'm into that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's my that's my shtick. And uh, chick, <laughs> chicks dig it too. That's my trope. That's my trope. And chicks love it too because they think that you're that you're that you're being punished and you're not. <laughs> it's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that terrible thing when you were trying on that dress. Oh, yeah, that one makes you look a little bit fat. Oh, I'm sure in trouble tonight. Oh well, no. Oh, no. Oh, you no. might punish me by sucking my dick. Yeah. Longer than normal. Oh, no. A uh, lot, of, lot of people got run out of Catholic schools for using this form of punishment. <laughs> by the way, there goes my YouTube monetization for this episode. <laughs> you were hoping to monetize this on YouTube? Do we have any super chats we need to read? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have one super chat from WMD. He says, uh, "Hey guys, did I ever tell you about? Yes, you, I, you did. We're we're not reading that again. We're not re- not even for twenty five bucks. I'm not reading. We've that got again. a super chat for fourteen dollars and eighty eight cents from someone who's not only edgy but in- extremely creative. Oh, nice. 
I actually, I'd be thrilled as shit if we each had seven dollars and forty four cents to split. Whoo! But by the way, that's what I have been doing. So I know, like most of my audience listens to the podcast and they don't watch my YouTube channel. But that's what I've been for the most part, as I've been live streaming on YouTube. In fact, I did an eight hour. I did two eight hour streams. What am I talking about? I did one eight hour long stream where we went through the entire uh, book of universally preferable behavior and talked about why it's wrong. That was a thing that actually happened. And I live streamed. It Sounds for thrilling. Hours. It was the people who listened to it. Were, I, were I, uh, I tuned, I tuned in for approximately 45 seconds of that. And then I was like, <laughs> Oh wow, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> it's, it's a very niche audience. Uh, and then yeah. I did another eight hour live. Stream. No, you're, you're you're talking to a guy who tweets constantly about WNBA betting lines. I know all <laughs> about niche markets. Yeah. OK. So uh, the other eight hour long podcast I did. Are, are you familiar with the game Desert Bus? No. OK. So Desert Bus was a game that was invented by uh, Penn and Teller. Of course, they had coders because they don't code right uh and they made it for the sega genesis and unfortunately it was never released uh the company that made the game went out of business before the game's release and uh the what is it the sega cd kind of died so they hadn't there was no real need to release it but a leaked version came out like a decade later and one of the games because it has like a bunch of different games on it right because penn and teller there's really like a bulk of games. Like there's like a little platformer in there where you're playing Penn and Teller, but it's intentionally kind of shitty. Um, there's like some magic games, you know, kind of fuck with you. But then there's one called Desert Bus. And the whole thing is a giant fuck you to Janet Reno, who, th- who thought that video games were too violent. And instead of having violent video games, you know what we need to have? We need to have games that teach kids how to be better proletariats. I mean, workers in the economy. And so... You know, instead of teaching them how to pick up a gun and shoot people, what they should do is teach them how is to pick up a tank and drive it into a compound full of kids. Well, yeah, there's that, too. <laughs> so Penn and Teller thought, hey, um, since one, since you're shitty, since you're a shitty person uh, and two, this is a terrible idea. We're going to show you how bad this idea is. So they made a game where you are the bus driver and you have to drive a bus from tucson arizona to las vegas and there's no traffic coming either way um and there's nothing along the sides of the road for the entire way and your bus has a governor that only lets you go 45 miles per hour and to make things even worse there's a slight veer to the right that keeps you having to like tap left every once in a while to you know to course correct otherwise you end up in the dirt and so if you do the math, 380 miles, 45 miles per hour, I think it's 380 miles. Could be wrong on that. That's eight hours. So you have to drive a bus for eight hours from Tucson to, to Las Vegas, and there's nothing to do at all except honk the horn. There's no pause button because life doesn't have a pause button. And if for some reason you end up in the dirt, guess what happens? You get towed back in real time. So if you drive for eight, five hours and you end up in the dirt, uh, they'll tow you backwards for five hours back to Tucson. So I played this game. For eight hours <laughs> and live streamed the whole thing. And I if, don't need. And if you complete the mission, then you get one point. So I got one point in Desert Bus and it took me eight hours. Yeah, I don't need this game because I have relatives in Ohio and a 30 year old geo prism. <laughs> yeah, but where's the uh, where's your organite? Oh, uh, in Organite City. Have I ever told you this tale? No. In Organite City? No, we, we need to hear about it again, I, I think. It's been a while. There was, so, uh, back at Occupy Philly, there were a lot of people with mental illnesses, which we pretend aren't mental illnesses because we want to remove the stigma. And the best way to remove the stigma from mental illness is to take marching orders from people who are batshit crazy. And there was this fellow at Occupy Philly who... He, he was there to start recruiting for Organite City, which was his city that was made entirely of Organite. So it was a city out in the middle of nowhere and he, every all the buildings, all the roads, everything would be paved with Organite. And their main uh, the main means of supporting the city, their industry was Organite production. And they were completely cut off from all of the outside world. And they I had a question i said okay listen 
So you're cut off from the outside world. Like, let's say you're in the middle of North Dakota or something, and uh, you just make Organite all day long. How do you get the materials you need to make Organite? And I broke the guy's brain, and then he just ignored the question. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, but he, f- if anyone he knows felt that I- it had healing properties, but apparently it doesn't heal schizophrenia. Oh. By the way, I'm still looking for a, a penis mold, a penis-shaped mold for Organite. Um, wish app wish app yep okay they, they, they will sell you penis shaped those. they will they will sell you penis shaped molds of anything for a while on open bazaar for those of you who are familiar i had an erotic bakery going called the muff inn nice. and uh, we we sold uh various little uh oh. whatever's by the way, I still have lots of stuff for someone bought like some stickers from me a while ago and I didn't ever got a notice. I just logged into my PayPal. I was like, oh, let's check my PayPal because I had a bunch of money from uh, Patreon because I still have people who support me on Patreon, even though I don't upload anything to Patreon anymore. They're just like, well, it's an easy way for me to give you two bucks a month and it's right there. Fuck it. I'm just going to leave it alone. And I'm like, all right. I just don't want to support Patreon, but, you know, I still get, like, 15 bucks from it. So every once in a while, I forget. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's been, like, three months. Let me go check it. And I went and put it in there, and I checked my PayPal, and I already had money in there. And I was like, what's going on? So I checked, and, like, two months prior, someone had, like, bought a bunch of uh, Bad Audio is a Hate Crime stickers. And I was like, dude, I've been out of those forever. So I had to return him the money because I never got a notification that I got it. But I still have, like, I still have um, Bipcot uh, turntable mats slip mats for like if you like dj i still have those i still have my uh egoist flags including my spook craig flag i still got a whole shitload of libertarians against humanities things that i can't sell legitimately so it's gonna be one of those things like hey send me i have my things. steve miller miller don't take my bolo ties flag i use it all the time oh shit Man. yeah i work i I live near a cemetery and I will occasionally take it and uh, sprawl it out in the cemetery and just chill for a little bit <laughs> uh, on the flag featuring my own likeness. Yep. I really want to get it. I, uh, the next batch of flags I'm going to get, I need to get the, um, that's my purse. I don't know you flags. And again, that's going to be one of those things that I can't like put up a website and be like, Hey, I'm selling this because copyright issues, but it's going to be one of those things like, Hey Jim, you got the stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, got the I know a guy. I know a guy who knows a guy. I also got a bunch of bip strongs. So if you want bip strongs, I got plenty of those things. I haven't even worn one in a while. I have a full bag of them. They last a really long time. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you want to treat that as a official product endorsement, but <laughs> which by the they way, do last forever. Yeah. I, and it's usually the hologram that goes. They don't break. It's not like yeah. they snap or anything like that. But it's just the hologram that's inside. Yeah. And if you don't, if you if you don't care about that, then they'll last even longer. Yeah. yeah. So I I kind of have. Uh, like I, I want to say lifetime warranty, but not really. It's this while supplies last, and I still have like, I still have a good five hundred of these things at least, ready to go. But uh, you know, if one gets worn out, let me know. I'll send you some. I'll replace it. Just show me a picture that your that your bip strong died or something, and I'll send you another one. I saw I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in about a year or so, and he noted the bip strong and said, "Ugh, you're still wearing that." Because he is a <laughs> la 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 leftist. Yeah. Uh, so every, triggering libs. Uh, there's been one time that I wore it, and someone was like, "You know those power ba- balance bracelets don't work." And I'm like, "Yeah, they're, they're they're obviously scams, but these ones protect me from the government with magic crystal healing energy." And he's like, "Oh, that's funny." <laughs> I showed it to him, and he was like, "That's amazing." Um, but everybody else, I'm pretty sure, like thinks they're like. Man, that dude's still wearing those things. Didn't he hear the scam? Oh, I'm going to be nice and just not mention it. You know, he'll figure it out on himself. You know what I'm going to mention is that their flag has fringes and therefore they have no power over right, it. Right, right. Because, you know, admiralty law. Don't don't you know anything? <laughs> yeah. Uh, s- speaking of sovereigns, is our boy Adam Kokesh making moves? Do we know? <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about Brian. <laughs> So I guess Kokesh did an interview with Ben Swan, and it's always interesting because anytime he does an interview with someone, they're completely oblivious to like the giant scandal that's been going on around him. You remember the scandal, yeah. right? The the Japan which one? There's 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 eighty. <laughs> the most recent, most evil one, probably the most evil one of all. Uh is the hiring of people to fuck with someone? Is that what you're talking yeah, 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 about? Yeah, 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 yeah. And possibly Larkin yeah. Rose too. They possibly was after Larkin Rose as well. 
Yeah. As somebody who's met Larkin on multiple occasions, uh, let me tell you that if you're Adam <laughs> Kokesh, you could 100% just fucking take him in a fight. Like, if you really want to fuck with him that bad, just show up. And uh, I think Larkin Rose isn't going to call the cops. No. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, j- j- <laughs> just just settle it. However, if you do that, that's not good for social media likes. No. So. That's, that'll go over like a lead blimp. It's not not good for clout. No, it's not good for clout. No, and I'm not the biggest fan of Larkin, but he's been he's been calling out Kokesh. So and and it, it it honestly looks like uh, most people who have any degree of power within the LP, uh, one are wasting their time, two. Uh, just kind of roll their eyes and change the subject whenever you mention Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the the idea that he's going to be on anyone's ballot come November 2020 is pretty far fetched. Like I don't see him walk, walk. And the other thing is he's burned so many bridges that I don't see how he could like walk into a convention, yeah, full of libertarians that listen to shows such as this one. Oh, and that's right. Ah, <laughs> okay, so. There was one thing he did. Uh, he started to try to. He tried to start a Twitter feud with um, uh, Tom Woods. <laughs> That's gonna go well. And it was over the dumbest shit ever. Uh, I think. I think what what Tom Woods said to like he said. I don't. He deleted the tweet, so I don't know what he said um, initially. But all the other stuff is there. Uh, but Tom Woods was like, uh, "Stop smoking weed, buddy." <laughs> like or stop tweeting while you're high, dude. <laughs> because he said something really, really stupid, and th- which he had to admit that was stupid because he deleted it. But either way, um, and then he started going on this rampage like, how dare you stigmatize pot smokers with this outdated Ooh. stigma that potheads are stupid? It's like, well, they are stupid when they're high. That's the whole point of getting high. It's kind of the same thing. I love drunk, you know. <laughs> I absolutely love it when people act like smoking pot is the same as like being black or gay or some shit <laughs> uh, like it's this indelible identity that you could ne- that you're born with and you could never ever ever get rid of yeah uh that that's that's really really funny but uh, uh you what, were there what, what, when are the stoner, I caught- what are the stoner pronouns by the way we need to respect those high and high self <laughs> high and self okay uh but y- you were there the day that i caught Kokesh searching his own name on Twitter, oh. which is not at all a narcissist behavior, but I had uh, inadvertently unblocked him in order Oof. to read a thread because he was making a fool of himself. Might have even been the Tom Woods thread. I don't really remember. <laughs> and I mean, what, uh, I wait, had, he, he, got, he said something stupid on Twitter, uh, Twitter, Jim, uh, which time? <laughs> <laughs> and uh so for ease of readability, I unblocked him just so I could just so I wouldn't have to like go do ten thousand different clicks in order to read this thread. And then I forgot to reblock him. Oh. And then two days later, here he comes replying to a fucking three year old tweet of mine. <laughs> in which I had made fun of him. Uh. And uh he promptly got himself reblocked. Yeah. So, uh, but he what, he unblocked me on Twitter, and I think that, I think that might have to do with that court case that we talked about earlier, uh, where you know if, I think you know or if public officials or publicly officials they have to unblock you. You can't block people on Twitter. That's right. Uh, and you live in and you live in Ancapistan, and he's going to permanently abolish the federal government with a two page document. Yeah, just so which that is he, just so that he can legally block me while being a candidate. Yep, that, that's, his that's how he's going to that's how he's going to do it. And, and I, it's it's just such a cute, like childlike Aww. idea that like one guy's going to win the election uh, as a libertarian, which whatever. And then uh, he'll take office. He'll take his hand off of Lincoln's Bible or Atlas Shrugged or whatever book he gets sworn in on. And then he'll be like, OK, bring me the document. He'll sign a piece of paper. And everybody who works for every federal agency, us included, everybody who <laughs> every everybody in the military is just going to shrug and be like, well, he signed it. Guess we all got to go find something else to do now. No uh, one's going to no one's going to fight about it. No one's going to do anything. Nobody will try to block it. It'll just be uh, something that happens organically and is not at all the same thing as a dictatorship. Right. 
Well, Atlas shrugged, more like Fed shrugged. Am I right? Liberta- Got him. Yeah. I, I find that in an off in a in a stunningly high amount of cases, libertarian is Latin for somebody who would absolutely support a dictatorship if it were someone they agreed with. Look at how many of them praise Pinochet for fuck's sake. Well, he he, he did get rid of communists in a, in a very but 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 Rothbard. Way. Oh, okay. Well, you got me there. Well, that was Hayek. Oh, it was Hayek. All yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm not sure Rothbard ever said anything about Pinochet. Nor just Reagan. Yeah, I mean, Hoppe embraced the meme, but that was about it. Like, but I don't think he ever came out. I think he was very anti Pinochet. <sighs> but he likes the memes. He's he's a meme. He's a memey guy. Well, he's also like seventy years old, so yeah. uh, that hu- that humor is like sort of appeals to him. He's like, <laughs> oh, oh t- throwing pe- pe- uh, violently murdering people who disagree with me—that's hilarious. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it is though. <laughs> the first, the first six thousand times, sure. Yeah, when yeah. that's one of when that's one of four jokes your alt right edge lord ass knows, then no. Yeah, I, I do think it's funny occasionally. Like if someone voices an opinion different than me, I in jest go like, "Where's my helicopter?" But other than that, yeah, yeah. The the I, I don't know. The physical removal stuff is still funny to me. I don't know. Eh. Eh. It was, eh, eh, but maybe eh. it's because I'm not on Facebook and I don't follow the Hoppian uh, pages on there anymore. It's it's clear that you don't have the refined sense of humor of me, a guy who had a podcast about Joe Matarese. Yeah, which by the way, truly glorious, right? I'm like so, the the, I'm so the height of the height of that. the <laughs> height of comedy. Wait, would you what? Huh? What'd you, what'd you just say? I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I, was, I said, um, I'm so glad I, I found out about that guy. I would not have known about that guy had it not been for you because I don't, I don't run, in, run in those circles. But man, that documentary. Well, it's because you're not 60 years old and Italian and living in New Jersey. Oh. It's it's such a strange little uh, like niche market that he's shocked like won't propel him to superstardom. Uh, like I, I get up there. I talk about how things just ain't the way they used to be and about how uh, Rocky's the best movie ever made. And the second best movie ever made is any of five mob movies that I'm going to talk about as if they are not 30 years old. So, well, we got the Irish. It's beautiful. We got the Irishman. But he's Irish. He's not Italian. In the movie, he was Italian, though. North northeast of U.S., uh, like this whole New York, New Jersey, Philly Italians, they really they they get into the whole Italian shit, and it's pretty cringe. I gotta say, uh, did, did you at least see the Irishman yet? Uh, no. However, Dan Scully, highly recommended follow. He's a film critic that I know. Okay. Uh, at Dan Scully on Twitter, he posted a thing that has an interesting way to break it into four episodes, which, given my short attention span, might be preferable. Yeah. But like, I don't. Raul doesn't like that shit, so I don't. Know. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a big fan. Uh, uh, let let the uh, social media um, pitchfork mob come at me, but I'm not a big fan of Godfather movies. Not a fan. But Goodfellas was great. Love Goodfellas. So the Irishman you know- was. I wish it was a good balance between the two where it's like it, it was almost like the Godfather that kept itself entertaining, at least to me. Casino, I kind of enjoyed. Honestly. Casino was great, too. Yeah. Yeah. But the but I, I don't know if I could sit there and watch it today. Like my attention span has just been shortened <laughs> by all manner, all manner of screens yeah. and the idea of sitting down for three and a half hours. Plus, Joe, like I've seen so many shitty comedians do Joe Pesci impressions by this point in my life oh. that. Oh no no! Joe Pesci was not Joe Pesci. It, it it was so weird. Like Joe Pesci was actually like calm and reserved the whole movie. He did, wasn't doing that. Do I look like a bear to you? He didn't do any of that shit. He was just always kind of like, yeah, we need to go Clown check this either. guy out. I want you to do huh. this for me. Yeah, it was. He was a complete. He actually was not Joe Pesci in that movie, and it was great to kind of see him doing a different character. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. It was pretty good. But I, I I will say that I had to. I watched half of it. And it wasn't because my attention span was getting to me, which is weird because I'm ADD. No, no, no. I could only get tickets to go see a movie that I had because I also had to do a show called Recording in Progress with my uh, where it's his show called uh, Recording in Progress. <coughs> recording the letter in apostrophe uh, progress because it's, we're recording 
and there's progress going on. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's because we're kind of like reviewing films and talking about like how the entertainment media conglomerates are just pandering to uh, uh, shitty politics. But anyways, of both sides. Um, but it's not it's not limited to the entertainment industry. Right, right. But a lot of times we're into talking about comics, but um, but I'm not into comics. So it's kind of interesting to hear what's going on in that world, because what's going on in that world is scary. It's it's if like what people over exaggerate what's going on in Hollywood and the music industry and all that stuff. If that was true, if all of it was true to the extent they were saying it was true, that's actually going on in the comic industry. It's kind of scary. But anyway, I see your com- I see your comics industry and raise you a young adult fiction. Oh, shit. They are insane. These people should not be writing books for anybody young. Nobody young should be taking any pointers from these people. Uh, I didn't even like young adult when I was a kid, except for Matt Christopher. Shout out to Matt Christopher, who wrote all the sports books that were available through book orders. <laughs> oh, so that's how you got good at sports gambling. Okay. I need to. Uh, right. Uh, it, it, it was. Uh, yeah. They they used to come out with junior lines. And uh, we, <laughs> we we had a, we, we had a mini sports book set up at our school. Fuck yeah. Uh, but anyway, so hold the, on, hold on. I, I got to finish my story because it's getting brain. It. Yeah. Uh, so I had I watched half of The Irishman, the first half. Then I saw, um, won't you be my neighbor? No, not won't you be my neighbor, Mister Rogers' Neighborhood, with Tom Hanks as Fred Rogers. So I went uh, from like awful, terrible people in the mob killing people to Mister Rogers back to awful, terrible people in the mob killing people. That was it. Was a nice little. Nice little break. Did this happen on an eight hour stream? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> While I was playing Desert Bus, I did this. Yes. This is this is what happened. <laughs> Would you be mine? Left, left, left. Could you be mine? <laughs> left, left, left. Won't you be my neighbor? Left, left, left. Left, left, left. Left, left, left. Eight hours. <laughs> that's an interesting that's an interesting concept for a game but the game that i absolutely hate that my boyfriend plays a lot is this untitled goose game oh which is too i, I love that i game. Ha- i absolutely hate it <laughs> uh, and it's and it's it's mainly it's mainly that fucking honking Honk. sound yeah yeah uh, it j- just constant it's the worst and the reason i hate it is it so closely parallels the philadelphia accent like it sounds like i'm listening to somebody about to talk about how the eagles were like hey 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 how you doing how you doing how you doing eagles secondary <laughs> no that game is hilarious dude i fucking love that game anytime nah, anytime i'm, I'm like in not my a discord, fan anytime i'm in my discord and someone's like Hey, what's that goose game? Like, I'll play it right now. Don't even have to ask. I'll just do it. And they're like, fuck yes. <laughs> it's Splatoon, it's Mario Maker, or it's Get the Fuck Out. Um, dude, I'm 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 still all about that Mario Maker. We're getting an update. Uh, this will be out tomorrow, so it'll be out today. So there's an update coming out today where you actually play as Link. And uh there's like a speedrun mode that there's gonna be incorporated. We have the spiky ball dude, the guy that vomits spiky balls and throws them at you. We're getting that. And the little prickly uh, pear things. I personally know three people who are fans of your levels. By the oh, way, oh really? I've yeah, I've passed them around. Really? And uh, no one, no one's beat the grudge yet. Nah, it's still. I mean, my on... niece is twelve, but uh, that yeah. doesn't stop her from being able to do a shell jump. Come on, don't be a pussy. <laughs> you can quote me, twelve years old. How many people do you think like grew up and they're like, man, I want to be a video game developer when they when I grow up that they grew up, made one shitty like Mario Maker level. And we're like there. I lived my dream. (laughs) No comment. (laughs) Hit a little close to home. I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess we're wrapping up the podcast now. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Go, if you need get, me, I'll be here crying, smoking fake weed. <laughs> That's real weed. <laughs> it just doesn't get you high. <laughs> uh, geez. Jeez Louise. So, yeah. It's been kind of weird not doing a podcast for this long. I, th- I think this is the longest break that we've had. Yeah. Uh, 
one thing that I that I would like to do, uh, mainly for the benefit of our commie listeners, I know that we have a, a whole bunch of leftist to communist listeners. There's there's who, quite a bit of them, but I, th- I think mostly they turn in just to hear like, okay, what stupid shit did Molyneux do today? What stupid shit did Coke? Yes, do today? exactly. Yeah. And I I know these people in particular look forward to the episodes that I'm on because I bring that patented gutter faggot gay shade to uh, libertarian morons and. Uh, one thing that I will, I'm willing to publicly commit to, is at some point, uh, you and I will do a show where uh, we'll go through just the list of libertarian candidates for the presidency because I looked through it and holy shit, uh, these are people who should be mocked. If you, if you want to see some really stupid libertarians, man, <laughs> uh, I, I have look at the ones running for president. Well, no, dude, I got I got one that'll top that. Uh, this person thinks that logic is short for logistics um, that it doesn't like if a smaller state is always going to be more totalitarian than a big state. And so South Korea is just as totalitarian as North Korea. Um, What other crazy shit has he said? Yo, did you hear about the Ethereum guy that was on meth (laughs) and got arrested for, for, for going to North Korea? That's the most libertarian thing I've ever heard is going and helping the government of North Korea set up a blockchain. That's peak libertarianism oh, right there. Shit. But what is the blockchain for exactly? Uh, it blocks people from getting out of the chains at the uh, re-education camp. Where's my rim shot? <laughs> I need it's, a soundboard. It's, right, it's <laughs> right there in the name. Yeah, best Korea. Always great. <laughs> now we can, we can best... put all, all, all the slave labor people in uh, on the blockchain. So that we always- okay. Sorry, but no place where Korean men are starving is the best. Um, I I need them plump, Jim. Well, you know they can. Oh, I don't know. Have you seen uh, starving African kids? How they get that pot belly? Does that count? Will nope. that work? I need the I, I need the thickness across the shoulders. I need the fatness in the cheeks. I need it all. Um, all over, like like Piro, as they might say. People know what's up. People know what's up. Shout out to Travis for providing the mic I'm using right now, by the way. Oh. Uh, oh you know he's oh, he listening. Gave, what happened to your other one? Did it die? No, I had I, no, he said this to me like way back in the day, like back when I first got fired. Oh okay. and uh, <laughs> I, I was like, you know, I, I, oh, I, 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 I wanna right. I yeah. wanna make sure I wanna make sure you have so every time I use it I like to I like to shout out Travis. Shout out to him. Yeah, because I was like, hey, hey, did you have didn't you have a mic this whole time you were doing the Freedom Fiends? And I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. It, it's it's the it's the it's the uh, gift that you have to return, but no big deal. And uh, but well, Travis that, that's showed what up you on. Get, my, that's what you get for snitching on his GoFundMe. That's what you get. And being a commie. And being a commie. Uh, SJW. But, uh, Tra- Travis was on my uh, drinking game stream last week. I I went on, turned on this podcast of two female comedians where every other word is like or yeah, and uh, just took like a drink podcast, every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 well the thing is they're both like super like 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 they're both super liberals so oh. it, and they don't do any show prep so it's just them saying talking points and then agreeing with each other there's never any conflict it's just yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think disenfranchised people should yeah 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 and uh you know what's a good way to uh get like. back at trump is uh getting on stage at a comedy club and telling everyone how shitty he is whoa yeah yeah amen 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 it's this Quasi religious experience, <laughs> and I, I I don't know I it's uh it's it's quite the arduous podcast to listen to unless you're drinking claws every time they say like or yeah at which point it gets great. Damn. Uh, f- shout out to Club Time DJ as well. So there is this show. It's a music show that comes on between five and seven nights a week, depending on the week. And it's these two old black dudes. One of them's in Longview, Texas. One of them is, I believe, in Washington, and it's called MSL Malachi, and they play all these mixes, and one night it's EDM, one night it's country, but it's multi-format, and I like getting in their little speaker chat room and giving shout-outs to people, and, yeah, but yeah, they're great. Club Time DJ on Twitter. You can see all their shows. They're fantastic, and it's great background music if you're working or cleaning the house or whatever. Uh, putting a little MSL Malachi episode is 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 good times. By the way, speaking of Mav, 
Uh, so what 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 Christmas movies are you going to watch this year? Uh, probably the same as every other year, and none, uh, oh. unless uh, 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 unless cajoled. But I the, is the right answer Die Hard or something? No, that, that's definitely the wrong answer because, as you know, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Oh, it's right there in your little uh, bio line of the thing. I should have yeah, cheated and looked, yeah. but alas. Uh, yeah. uh, Gremlins. I'll watch Gremlins. I don't know. You know, I need to watch Gremlins because I don't know if that's a Christmas movie or not. So I've been having. Oh, have you I've, never seen it? It's no, it's I have seen it. So here's the thing: like, if you've seen a movie when you were a kid and you haven't seen it since, you might as well say you not have seen it because I don't remember much of it. I just remember like midnight. You know, don't give them. No, because I don't. I I don't want to. I, I don't want to live in a world where I haven't seen Problem Child 2. That's been a long time since I've seen Problem Child movies. <laughs> Ripping rip pepperoni, John Ritter. Ripping pepperoni. But speaking of John Ritter, the best Christmas movie of all time is Bad Santa. Bad Santa. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely love Bad Santa. Th- there's two movies that I watch every year on a certain day or a certain area of time in, in the year. Uh, one is definitely during Christmas, or on Christmas, and before Christmas, I'll watch Bad Santa multiple times, like during the month, this month. So I've already seen it once this month. It's fucking great. You got to watch the unrated version. Stay away from the director's cut. The theatrical, it's okay. Um, but the unrated version is the best. The director's cut, try, it's almost like they tried to make a Paul Thomas Anderson film, and but to Paul Thomas Anderson was like... I don't know, ha- having a stroke at the time he was editing it. It's it's, it's awful. But oh. if you watch the unrated version, it's great. Because they get rid oh. of all the narration and all oh. of, a lot of the like ex- like the the plot exposition. So it's just like a random series of events that you have to like try to figure out what the hell is going on. But it's like, I already know what's going on because I watched the theatrical version and the unrated version. So it's kind of a waste of time. So, sort of bad Santa esque story. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I have a I have a friend who was What'd at work the other day. Uh, <laughs> I have a fr- I, I have a friend who was at work and was sitting there, and they have a very like liberal bring your kid to work policy. So there's this six year old kid that's just randomly in their office where they're all in a bunch of cubicles, whatever. And goes over, starts talking to my friend, like, hi, my name's blah, blah, blah. I'm seven years old, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the kid's just chattering, chattering, chattering. And my friend's giving, like, one word responses. And then the kid goes, hey, did you know that my parents are getting a divorce because my dad had an affair with a woman that he met here? (laughs) And everybody's eyes just widened. Uh, God, I would have killed to be there for that. (laughs) But um, I also watched an interesting movie the other day. Uh, it's called. It's a little film. You may have heard of it. I don't know if you have, but it's called. Uh, what was it called? God, it eludes me. It's it's not a very popular movie. Oh, it's a Wonderful Life, and I've come to the conclusion that that too is also not a Christmas movie. And uh, so I've been catching a lot of flack on Twitter, which I'm I'm perfectly okay with catching flack on Twitter. I kind of like it when people get angry with me. <laughs> I'm just not gonna lie. <laughs> I like retweeting them and stuff. Uh, where everyone's upset that I'm saying that Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Um, getting a lot of people telling me that I'm wrong. And it, it's it's amazing how many people are like are qualified to talk about what's going on in the movie Home Alone. And you can tell, like, okay, yeah, you haven't seen Home Alone in quite a long time, have you? Oh, leave Amy Klobuchar out of this. <laughs> like, I, 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 do you know what the plot of Home Alone is? Like, do you actually know what happens in the movie, or has it been too long for you to remember? I remember. Okay. What happened? Bandits, etc. So what happens is they're shitty parents and they leave their kid behind and Mm -mm. uh, no, no, we're missing major plot beats. So, so the movie is about a shitty family, including Kevin and all, and all of them are, are being shitty to each other. And Kevin is They like, live in Chicago. This is to be expected. No, no, no. They don't live in Chicago. Where do they live? Okay. So all John Hughes movies take place in a little town called Shermer, Illinois. 
Didn't you ever see that's Dogma? Chicago Land though, isn't it? Yeah, it's he's supposed wearing to be a like a Blackhawks hat and shit. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah, it's that's, a, that's Chicago Land. That counts. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but Shermer, Illinois, doesn't exist. If you ever watch Dogma, you you know the whole exposition about that whole part because Jay and Silent Bob saved up all their money to go to Shermer, Illinois, because. All the women are fine, and all the dudes are whiny pussies, so they thought they could live like fat rats, being the only dope connect in Sherman, Illinois. But then they got to Illinois, and they found out that there is no place in Sherman, Illinois, and movies are fucking bullshit. But anyways, so <laughs> so, they, so all the family's being shitty, and, uh, and he's being a brat, and so, he go, so his mom's like, go up upstairs and uh, think about what you've done, and he was like... He's like, I hope, I like, and she, and she was like, I don't like this family anymore. And he's like, and I, like, I wish you would disappear or whatever. He's like, well, why don't you ask Santa to do that for you? He's like, he's like, if, if I, I don't want, I don't want that from Santa. What I want from Santa is that make all of the family would disappear. So he wakes up the next morning and gets his Christmas wish that all his family disappears and he enjoys it. And then he realizes that, oh, he feels vulnerable because the, the wet bandits are after him. And so he has an epiphany and he realizes the importance of Christmas and family around Christmas. And then he relays that story, that arc that he has to his neighbor who is having trouble with his son and convinces him to contact his son for Christmas because that's the importance of Christmas. Then he wishes that he gets his family back. And that's the only thing that he wants from Christmas from Santa that year, which is also the same thing that happens. The other one, except he actually talks to Santa in the second one, but the second one's garbage anyway. So fuck it. Then, uh, and then the whole, 15 minutes of booby trap thing happens and that's it. And it's only like 15, 20 minutes that the booby trap stuff is in the movie out of a 90 minute long movie. The rest of it's about expositions about Christmas and him learning about the true value of Christmas and the true value of family on Christmas. And he gets his family, he gets his Christmas wish of his family returning. And um, yes. And it seems like everybody just remembers it just for the, the booby trap stuff and nothing else. And it's like, no, no, no. You can't say no. I remember it for I remember it for the kid wetting his bed, like easy oh, yeah, on yeah. the Pepsi Fuller. I I, I remember that. I don't want to. And I remember him. that the he mom the bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wish you'd all just. And I remember the I the I'm living alone. I'm living alone. Yeah. The, that Jumping and I re- I and I remember the part where he instead of going into the bed with a kid who wets the bed, he goes and he crawls into a California King with Michael Jackson. Yikes. But listen, the only reason he's fucked up is because the fame went to his head. That's it. it yeah. He he never he never got molested. Michael Jackson is totally innocent. I, I do think he's innocent now, though. I'm not going to lie. Uh my gay partner believes that he has to be innocent because he was chemically castrated as if you can't molest someone. If you've been chemically castrated, well, uh, obviously no, no, uh, I used to believe that he did that stuff. And then I started looking at it after the whole, that documentary that came out not too long ago came out and I was like, Oh yeah, he yeah. probably did it. And then I, then I started seeing stuff about it and I was like, wait, this doesn't make any fucking sense. And so I started digging around some more and I was like, yeah, this doesn't make any whole lot of sense. Even his ex-wife who hates him was like, if yeah, if, if I saw him ever doing anything, any of that stuff, I would have fucking blown the whistle, but he never did. So I'm like, you know, if Lisa Marie Presley is covering for him. Yeah, dude, she was married to him for six weeks. She would yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's weird in the current media environment with, like, everything being all in your face all the time to realize what an enormous story that was. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, I that remember. That Elvis is... Elvis is yeah I I'm old enough to remember it too but that Elvis's daughter was marrying Michael Jackson and there's people today that don't know what ever happened yeah it you know, I I, it's I watched like, the MTV Music Awards just because Green Day was gonna play and I think Metallica was playing too I think Metallica was at that and Liz Taylor too Liz Taylor who was best friends with Michael Jackson of course uh her personal life was a huge tabloid story and when she married that construction worker Larry Fortensky shout outs he might be listening uh you know that that was huge and that really drove a lot of tabloid sales and now you know people barely know who Liz Taylor is and she's dead and Michael Jackson's dead wait is Liz Taylor really dead yeah Liz Taylor Liz Taylor's been dead for a while the daughter of Steve Tyler, right? No, 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 not Liv Tyler, Liz Taylor, Elizabeth Taylor. 
Oh, White Diamond okay. Lady. Okay. I was yeah. like, Liv Taylor. Where I was about to say, like, man, I would have done some terrible things to her. Unspeakable yet consensual things to her after seeing uh, Empire Records. But, uh, oh, the 90s. <laughs> so it goes. <laughs> We've now become a nostalgia pod, folks. Yeah. This is what we do. We're a couple of boomers who sit there and talk about things from back in the day. Oh, we're no di- we're no different than shows like 10, 20, 30 or Good Christian Fun or any of those. Uh, oh. You come here, you hear some good, totally non-offensive member berry stories from old Steve and Jim. And uh, <laughs> most importantly, you donate to our Patreon. Yeah. Oh, by the way, <sighs> Doom was a great game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I especially like the post Columbine version that has a library. Ever heard of this Bitcoin thing? <laughs> what, you, were you in high school when Columbine happened? Yeah, I, I remember I went into fifth period, which was English. I don't remember the teacher's name, but he was like a like a skinny, short white guy. He looked he looked like. He looked like a, uh, um, a Republican youth or a youth Republican. Um, right. And he brought out uh, a TV and he was like, hey, guys, um, we're we're going to skip today's lessons. Not really important. No homework today, but we should watch this and brought out the TV and we watched the, the coverage from the Columbine thing, which, by the way, was the dumbest thing the media could have ever done was hype that story up. Because yeah. ever since Agreed. then, everybody was like, oh, wait, I could be a fucking world famous fucking person and all i have to do is shoot up everybody that i hate at school awesome i'm doing it and we should have gone <laughs> we should have gone straight to mockery on those dandruff headed bitches yeah <laughs> uh like they looked like total losers they had zero friends and they fucking sucked and they were inaccurate shots they uh yeah. like they yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck them so and by the way really the whole, hot the whole story about them being bullied that was all garbage that was all trash that was all yeah, bullshit they, People, people, people just didn't like them. And the, uh, what I especially didn't like was how in ch- in churches of which I attended one uh, during the 90s, they were really hard pushing this Cassie Bernal story where there was this girl who was allegedly in the library at Columbine. And she they, they asked her, do you believe in God? Like a couple of, uh, you know, edgy new atheist bullies. And she says yes. And then, boom, they squeeze the trigger and they kill her. And she's this big martyr for the Christian faith. Only problem is that never happened. It's not corroborated by any wet witnesses who are in the library. Uh, it doesn't make any logical sense given like where she was shot, etc. cetera. Uh, it was created by Zondervan the Christian publishing house to sell books and sell books. It did. There was a book called she said yes, which I remember every single Christian kid at my school was reading and they were crying as they read it. Uh, and they really like gave her this great treatment and they went to her journals and she was like, you know, I'm just really trying to feel God's presence in her journals. And I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have want her journals published after her death. Yeah, if you were to go and little... talk to 17 year old Cassie Bernal, uh, <laughs> if, if, if that's what she would want her legacy to be. And, <laughs> <laughs> they, and they and they, and they went and they did it anyway. And these are people who profess to be Christians. But yep, uh, there you uh, go. Well, yeah. Anytime there's some like horrific story, there's always that like one thing where it's like, yeah, someone someone went there and she professed her her faith or whatever. So like the Ro- was it the the Rhodesian genocide? I guess there was like a family of Christians or a group of Christians that were letting yeah. people hide in their house and. and the- I know a, I personally know a couple people who like really started to question Christianity when it turned out this story was bullshit because they had they had pegged so much of their messaging to their youths on you need to be a fearless defender of the faith you need to be like this pegged. girl in the library and she was just a terrified girl in a fucking library being shot to death wait pegged are we back to talking about anal sex again butt stuff we're back okay. it all all okay. all roads lead to <laughs> anal ah <laughs> uh. <sighs> yeah, yep. like all those stories are the correct. But you know what? If that was true, there was a, there would be a simple way of getting out of it. You just do the Jordan Peterson. Do you believe in God? Well, that depends on what you mean by God. Do you talking about the metaphorical God? Or are you talking about the um, uh, the anthropomorphic uh, embodiment of uh, of God? Because if you're talking about the former, then it's possible that something like that could exist. Ah, and then they would shoot themselves. Yeah, the, yeah. The, oh, see, that's cl- well. They wound up doing that anyway. Oh, they wound up yeah. doing what? They ended up doing that anyway, oh. shooting themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So I, I bet that's the I, true story of what happened. Yeah, the the true story of what happened is that they were shooting kids in the library and then they picked up uh, the 12 rules for living or whatever the fuck Jordan (laughs) Peterson's book is called. They had an early copy that was exclusive to Columbine High. They got to rule three and they just said, you know what? This is all on Queer Eye for the straight guy and shot themselves. No, I actually um, I hate to break it to you, but that's not true. That was an urban legend. The truth of the matter is they actually read Freedom by Adam Kokesh and said, what the fuck is this insufferable (laughs) bullshit? They said wanna... plagiarism, the plagiarism rules they taught us in English class mean nothing and yeah. shot themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Like I read this in Rothbard. <laughs> this is for New Liberty. How dare you? One time a, ho- one time a homeless man gave me a copy of his ebook, uh, uh, and it, it had the same editorial standards oh. as Freedom, Freedom by Adam Kokesh because uh, the homeless man's book included a lot of uh, godlike production forum posts just copied oh, and pasted. I didn't know you knew Rich Paul <laughs> <laughs> directly in it, and uh, yeah, it, it was the it was the same uh, r- rigorous uh, editing process that Freedom had. That was good. By the way, I was going through some I was going through some old memes on my phone, and I found uh, the "What are the critics saying about Freedom" by Adam Kokesh, and it's all quotes praising it, but they're all attributed to Adam Kokesh. <laughs> good times. Yeah. So, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, not at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have absolutely nothing to plug. Uh, uh, well, there's one thing nope. you could. You can, ah. you can give us your sports betting uh, tips for the week. Or... I I could give you the, I could give you the sports betting tips for the week. Lay the points with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, they are favored by more than a touchdown, but they're playing Cincinnati and they're kind of in a good like bounce back spot. And they've got a, there's a big talent and and just sort of development gap between the two teams. So if you're looking to take a heavy favorite on Sunday, I would go with the Cleveland Browns, my home, and it's a it's a bias pick. Whatever. If you're looking for a futures, I would bet, never ever uh, f- bet on the Cleveland Browns or the Bengals. So the the Browns the Browns are oh, uh, are better than 500 against the spread this year. Uh, they're they're okay. not the old Browns. However, if you if in Vegas or anywhere else you find somebody who's taking WNBA futures and because uh, now we're talking about shit that I actually know something about, unlike the NFL. Uh, if you can find any place that's offering you futures, which means who's going to win the championship at the end of next season, and you find the Seattle Storm, take the Seattle Storm. There are two best players were injured all of last year, and they're getting them both back next year. And one of them is like basically Lady LeBron, except she looks like a horse. This woman named Brianna Stewart. Mm. And uh, yeah, I expect them to be back in all their equine glory <laughs> and bring a championship to Seattle, uh, who doesn't have a regular basketball team, so they have a really good home court advantage because people actually show up for the games, unlike in, oh, every other city with a WNBA team, including Atlanta, whose owner is now a senator. Uh, The owner of the Atlanta Dream was just appointed to the U.S. Senate by the governor of Georgia. So uh, now that she has an audience of 99 senators, that's larger than the Atlanta (laughs) Dream we're drawing for most games. All right. Moving on up. Yeah, and, you have anything uh, you're plugging? Uh, well, I'm plugging two two podcasts. So yeah, Brian Sovereign's Sovereign Tech, S O R V Y N Tech. At least you spelled it this. wrong, but sure. Yeah, S O V R Y N. No, that's how you, you spell it. You spelled Sorvin Tech, but sure. S O V R Y N. That time it's right. Okay, S O V R Y N T E C H. Well, it's I've had a lot of boomer sips, had a lot of boomer juice today, so I'm. But yeah, I want to plug Club Time DJ. Uh, definitely <laughs> look into Malachi, and I also want to plug the candy Zots, which are basically Jolly Ranchers with Pop Rocks inside. Wait, it's an what? Italian candy. Oh, holy shit! Have you not heard of this? No. What is this? Okay. Uh, when we get off air, text me your <laughs> PO, text me text text me your PO box address. I'll send you some. Oh, okay. But well, the PO, the, my PO box you can find on jimjesus.com. dot com. Or just just send me what I, just send me any address. It, just, it it doesn't matter. I'll I'll, I'll send you I'll, I'll send you, you zots. I'll tell you it right now. But you jimjesus.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. PO box is right there. 
Oh, all yeah, right. And, okay. okay, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, they're they're only available uh, at either Dollar General, but Dollar General only has the three fa- th- the three flavor pack. If you want to get the full six flavors, you got to go to Amazon and buy a full pound of Zots. But it's worth it, <laughs> and you should definitely do it. And Zots will change your life. And the cool thing is, if you're trying to eat healthy, as I'm doing, which is one of the reasons I quit smoking weed. Uh, it's a great candy to have because you just have one. It's like 20 calories and it's like a full candy experience. Oh, nice. So, cause like the, as the, as the like outside Jolly Rancher part dissolves, it releases the pop rocks and you get this like awesome fizz throughout your mouth. And yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then the other thing I'm plugging is another podcast again, not paid, uh, length. You North. Are you familiar with Link? You North are like you North are Link You North are. I don't know how he pronounces no, it exactly. I've never heard of this in my life. Yeah, yeah. you have to check it out because he's a uh, he's a he's a he's a gay and cap from I don't know where he's. I think he's from Michigan originally, but now he lives in New Hampshire. Uh, and he 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 does like like 30, 45 minute long things about like he read a bo- he'll read a book and then talk about like things related to that book or like he'll just have like an idea that pops in his head and he'll just be like oh, I'm gonna make a thirty minute long video and then goes on a two month hiatus and then comes back. Let to- me. Uh- but now he's got a podcast. <laughs> Let me ask you a question okay. at the risk of being accused of internalized homophobia. Okay. Is he one of these gays where everything he says sounds like it's a fucking question? No, no, no. no. Okay. You would not I, know that he's gay. And, and that's fine. Until, no, I don't even, he goes, I don't even care. He'll just be like, Hey, so um, I was reading Rothbard's book or whatever. And he brought us some interesting points. He got me thinking about this and then he'll go on like a long thing. And then like at the very end, he's like, all right, so I'm going to head out. Um, Looks like my grinder is blowing up, so I got to go. It's like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> like, what, what's happening here? Yeah. Because if someone has a lisp, I don't care. If someone has a feminine voice, I don't nope. care. But it's that raising of the voice at the end of every statement like <laughs> that it, it just drives me absolutely insane every time I hear it. <laughs> right? Ugh, valley gaze. The worst. No, 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 no lisp. No, like, I, I didn't know he was gay until... Old. Um, Until he blew you up on Grinder. Until he blew me up on Grinder. Shit. God damn it. Why are you outing me on my Grinder account? Shit. God damn it. I, uh, so much of gay Twitter is being outraged that somebody was rude on Grinder, an anonymous gay hookup app. Like, what the fuck did you expect? Well, everybody's gonna everybody's gonna be on their best behavior. Like it's a society bug. Get the fuck out of here. Anyways, I guess we'll wrap this up. Traps are gay. <laughs> yep, traps are traps are gay. Uh, stay on grinder. Uh, eat sots. Listen to Malachi. And Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Worms. Yeah, we covered it all. <laughs> <laughs>